Sometimes you feel like a nut. Hey, hello, farmers, and welcome back to Mercury Farms. Well, I got to check out to see what that great demand at the Windmill Hill is. Who knows? Uh, but we're in our case, Puma, up at the vehicle shop. I need to put some fuel into her. Uh, $314. What is this great demand here? Uh, Windmill Hill. It's for... Well, <laughs> we don't have any. And that would be... Wait, where is it? Uh, yes, it's barley. So I don't have any of that at all. Um, the good news this morning is, uh, well, the canola price, seven ninety nine, and we have 80,000 liters to sell there. Uh, some flowers, uh, yep, didn't uh, do what I was hoping, but, but if we come over here to milk, fourteen twenty nine. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to go ahead and sell that milk uh, because we do have 186,000 liters of it. The other thing I need to keep my eye on is right here, the wool price. Uh, we, before I went to bed last night, just before I almost slept in the night, I said, oh, there's no more room for wool at the sheep. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, the price, not so much. Uh, but right now, what we're going, what I'm trying to do is, well, fill up the case Puma. He's going up to the sugar beet field, and I assume, I haven't checked, but I would assume the sugar beets got to the first growth stage overnight. And so we're going to send them up there and get a second stage of fertilization down. But with the milk sale going to happen very shortly, we're going to get right on that because I don't want that. I don't know when that price peaked. But uh, I definitely want to go ahead and sell that milk first of all. So I, my plan was originally to go ahead and start cutting down those trees in our grass field. And we will get to that as well. But definitely want to make the sales first before something you know before the price starts dropping so yeah we're gonna we're gonna get a whole bunch of cash here today uh which is good because you know i'm getting ready to head back to the pacific northwest uh is that wide enough did i leave enough room yes i did uh so he's off on a worker so what i'm gonna do here and i kind of set up some things here oh right to the truck how great is that uh i did uh finish pick up the straw down by the sheep farm in that field that we did was that wheat or was that barley that we did i think it was wheat that we did in that field or was it barley i don't remember but any straw i had left over i gave to the cows and i did top off well not top off i emptied this tank tanker it had some water in it uh so the cows are all set for a little while oh whoa, whoa. Yeah, i kind of forgot here i gotta pull into here so we are up to 130, we'll just say $137,000 in the bank account overnight from some money from the biogas plant and obviously some money from our property income. And now we're about to get a whole bunch of cash. Um, almost $300,000. We're probably just shy of that. Probably going to be more like $260,000, 260000 Does that seem right? Uh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and here fill up some milk. Because uh, the other thing I was thinking of today, if we do get enough cash, and I think we will. Uh, where, where am I trying to go here? Oh, I'm trying to show you here. So the manure, we're down to 78,000, uh, which is fine. But I think what we're going to be doing here is if we go in here, go to trailers. And where was that trailer? Uh, I think it's the Brantner right here. Yes, yeah, the Brantner. So, yeah, I want to get a smaller trailer. Capacity wise, because uh, sometimes I'm using our other trailer to do other things. But what this does, as we saw, is we can also use it as a manure spreader. So we might go ahead and get into that uh, standard. How much is it going to cost me? We'll do wide tires, uh, Michelin wide tires. 58 grand, though. 58 grand. Um, well, it's going to be a little bit more next. I'm probably going to. Actually, I don't mind that uh, paint scheme a little bit. Uh, we'll leave that orange and I think it's that color rim color that the trucks have on it something like that So either or oh, that's done filling up. All right, so we can make our first trip on down to sealed milk And uh, yeah, I need to start making some more total mix rations for our cows although we just topped them off yesterday So they be they should be set for about nine days Give or take as for the fields that we harvested, you know, the sunflower fields, um, 
I think they're probably going to have to wait until they get back from the Pacific Northwest. So yeah, definitely want to keep an eye out on the wool prices for today. Like I said, we got maybe 10, uh, oh wait, no more. Those are 10,000 liters a piece. And I got eight. Yeah, so I got like 80,000 liters of wool ready to go. I had two empty pallets I put into um, the zone where this wool spawns. Nope, forward a little bit. There we go. So yeah, we were at 100, well, we'll see how much we get per tank. And this holds like uh, 62,000 liters. And remember I said, I think I needed like 250,000 to head to this back to the Pacific Northwest with 88,000. And I got another, I got two more tankers to go. So yeah, lick your chops. Uh, the money is tasting good this morning. Uh, let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead <laughs> Make one more delivery, and I'll bring it back for the last delivery. Like I said, I got two more deliveries to go. And, yeah, we should be somewhere around $380,000 by then. Well, actually, by my calculations, after we finish this last delivery that we have here, uh, yeah, we should be just over $400,000 in the bank account. I do have, like, another 1,000 liters left back at the cow barn. Uh, they can keep that. Uh, I'm not going to make a special trip down here for a thousand liters. But yeah, definitely uh, it's going to be a good day here on the farm. I want definitely want to not hit no cars, um, but also sell that wool when the price is hopefully good enough. Yeah, so we should be able to buy our trailer, uh, lease that wood chipper. We'll get some money back. Uh, from the wood chips and uh, sell some wool kind of prep the farm up so when we get back next week and I thought about trying to get this field replanted but uh, it's such a it's, it's, it's a big field so it's going to take a while and really the priority right now is to get some cash flow coming in so I can transfer that, that money. I think what I'll do is when I come back up here, we'll, we'll fill up the water, uh, well, the water tanker, this milk tanker that we have. And we'll put some water into it. That way I have enough uh, to give the water to the cows and the sheep. And our greenhouses and also our orchard may need some water as well. All right, so the truck I'm pretty much done with. So I'm going to go up here and hook it up to the trailer. And kind of prep ourselves for the wood chipper. Yeah, these maple trees is the main reason why we're going to use the wood chipper. Because that would just take me forever. I got a couple, I mean like three or four here. And I think I got another three or four over there. Um, let's head on down to the main farm. Our dude's farm should be ready to rock and roll with the lime spreader. So, yeah, was it a couple episodes ago? I did did some lime spreading, but then the video got corrupted because I lost power. So he didn't get to see me spreading lime. So today, uh, let me just make sure I'm doing the right field here. Um, yeah, this field needs lime. Won't take us too long to knock this out. And then we'll head up to the store. And uh, probably take the Deuce Fire. The Deuce Fire is starting to become my favorite tractor here on the farm because, I don't know, uh, the horsepower. I mean, the T8 is still my favorite tractor, don't get me wrong. But the Deuce Fire, yeah, I'm enjoying this tractor quite a bit. At first, I did not like the, uh, the chrome look on the paint. But I have grown to love it quite, quite nicely. Looks rather nice on there. Uh, it looked rather bad last evening. It was rather filthy until I washed it. I'm like, oh yeah, that, that looks a lot better. So I'm thinking these two fields down here. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to plant just yet. I know I said I was going to plant soybeans in the big field behind. It's a livestock market field. So 
I mean, I just did some flour, but I mean, I got to put something in here. Maybe canola, which reminds me, I got to sell some canola because the price is pretty decent today. But my main concern now is to get those trees out of there because I need to start making some more hay as well. At least by getting these fields done at some point, uh, maybe at the end of the episode we'll grab the T8 and uh, come on down here and seed these two small fields down here quickly before I catch my flight later on this evening. Yeah, it should be uh, nice to get to the Pacific Northwest and buy another field in the upper plateau. Maybe two fields? Uh, probably not two fields, but you never know. Uh, see how much money we do make today. Like I said, I got wool to sell and we got canola to sell. And who knows, maybe the sunflower price will creep up more than where it is now. Maybe, I don't know. I don't think we'll be doing any harvesting today, even though that field right over there, uh, I think that's canola over there, I think. I think I put canola in over there. But yeah, I definitely want to buy that uh, trailer that we just saw in the shop. Instead of selling the manure up at the BGA, I think we'll just start uh, collecting it and hopefully... I, it's been a while since I used a manure spreader to fertilize a field, so I don't know how how many liters it would take to like fertilize this field and the field behind us. That's kind of my goal. And it's uh, nice to do something different once in a while. Kind of get off my my main track the way I run a farm. Uh, I'm not going to be too worried about that little corner down there. But what I will do is, what I always try to do, that way I always know I got I got it in here because nothing worse than, you know, spending all your cash and it's like, oh, I need to go spread some lime on a field and realize, oh, I don't got lime. But it's also not a good idea in real life to fill it up and just leave it in there. And the lime doesn't cost that much to begin with. And it seems by putting the cultivating disc and away from the digestive injector, moving those apart, it seems to work out fine because I've reloaded the game and they're not entangled with one another. The mod I need to, uh, as I started this game, I did I downloaded a mod to try something out. I just want to see how much it costs and how it looked in the shop. And... Um, yeah, it's time to down. I need to download that global, global company mod because that mod requires the global company mod apparently, which it didn't say in the description. But it's all good. All right, so let me park this up, and I'll see you up at the shop momentarily. Well, I figured while we're up here, it's not going to cost me too much. It's not like I need it, but we'll top off with our fuel. 119 bucks. Thank you very much. All right, so let's head into the shop. Let's go right to trailers and get that one taken care of. Uh, this one right here. So, I mean, the trailer itself is a 38 grand, but since I'm doing, I want to do some manure spreading, uh, we're going to go ahead and go in there. It holds 25,000 liters. We're going to go with Michelin, uh, Y tires, and... Uh, See, do I want the main color orange or? Hmm, that doesn't look that bad. Um, nah. Uh, no, I know it's manure, but no. Nope, don't like that color either. Hey, you know what? That's different. What color is that actually? Azul. All right. Uh, olive. Yeah, I like green. Let's go with olive. Uh, yeah, 59.3. Uh, okay, so it is what it is. Let's go ahead and buy that. 
And then while we're in here, we'll back up to forestry equipment. I'm looking right at it. My arrow's actually right on it. Uh, there you go. Uh, right here, this guy right here, we just want to lease it. Uh, $3,000 for leasing it, but that's fine. I'm not going to change the color or anything like that because I'll just mean it's going to cost me more. Uh, which way is that thing facing? Of course it is. Facing right against the trailer. All right, so I'll have to hook up to the trailer first. So it only holds 25,000 liters, which is not bad if I want to do it for uh, just, you know, hauling grain around and selling grain while the other trailer is occupied, occupado. But um, as for manure spreading, I don't know how far that's going to get us. So now what I need to do is head on over to the animal farm, place this trailer underneath our belt. And he can start loading up on manure. And uh, yeah, we'll do some manure spreading later on. But definitely want to get rid of those trees so when I come back next week and I happen to cut up some hay, it'll be a lot easier to mow Ted and Windrow and pick up. I may have to, I think I got my other trailer underneath the belt as well. But now with all these cows going, hopefully, uh, you know, they produce milk like never before. Make sure I'm on the right implement. I'll have to drop that off. And I gotta play a little dosey -si do here. What did I say? Please hook up. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna use this manure later on to make sure our orchards and greenhouses are topped off. Let's get this guy parked right under the belt, hopefully. There we go. We'll drop that off. Right, I'll zoom in just a little bit. All right, got to unfold the pipe. Lower it down. And this is what's great about this thing. You come up to this maple tree that's usually hard to chop up. Uh, oh, I didn't unfold it yet. I thought I did. Here we go. Unfolded. Now we'll lower it. And now we just got to find the sweet spot. can be a little temperamental sometimes. There we go. Just like with the wood chipper when you're trying to clear out stumps, you got to get at the right spot. So from that tree we got almost 20,000 liters of wood chips. We'll throw that into the trailer. I think it went into the better have gone into the trailer. Now these trees are not a problem as we know. So we're not getting that much for wood chips. So I just hope we get enough to offset the cost of leasing this thing. But even if we don't, it just made it easier for us to get some, cut some grass and make some hay. One field done. One full trailer of wood chips. And our wood chipper also has a pretty good size load in it right now. So 
I don't know how much wood chips are going for. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter because there's only one place to sell wood chips at, which is the sawmill. So whatever the price is, that's what we're going to get. I mean, I guess I could put down the bioheating plant and probably get a little bit more for it, but we don't do wood chips often enough, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Go ahead and uncover our wood chips. It might be a little bit tight getting in here, but uh, no, we got plenty of room actually. All right, so 90,000 liters of wood chips. What do we get out of it here? And the survey says probably enough to cover our costs for leasing the wood chipper. <laughs> Yeah, 9,300, and I'm probably going to get another trailer and a little bit more. Got quite a few more trees to go. So let's get back to work so I don't have that thing for more than an hour. Then i got to pay more fees. Well, the trailer is full once again, and I'm pretty much down to two trees. But I'm thinking, uh, I don't know, do, do, do I... Do I leave a tree here? Just to give it some some character? Well, this thing can be very finicky. There we go. I say we leave a tree to make, give it some character. Uh, I mean, I got plenty of room to go around that tree to begin with, so it's not that big of a deal. So I'll park this tractor right on down here. Uh, that's what the other field looks like now with no trees in it. Yeah, it's going to be much easier to go ahead and cut that cut that grass, tend it, windrow it, and give it some hay. Although, I do believe we got a... Well, we had a decent amount of hay. I don't know what we got left. Uh, it says 14,000 here. What does it say here? Uh, yeah, I don't have that much hay back in the silo either. Plenty of straw. But, uh, yeah, we could use some more hay for sure. But we can get to that next week. I've been coming over here once in a while and trying to get our trailer topped off. And it might be topped off already. Yeah, it's not accepting any more, any more manure. So we got 25,000 liters in there. So what am I actually getting for the wood chips? Oh, $103. That's, that's a pretty darn good price, actually. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go down to the sawmill, sell this. Uh, come back up here. Empty out the wood chipper, return that, and uh, oh yeah, well, I should probably be checking the price on the wool. Five seventy eight still rising, and also the canola and sunflower prices. Sunflower, uh, not so much. Seven ninety nine for, at the vehicle shop. So we might go ahead and sell that when I get done with the wood chips. So let me make one trip up. I'll bring it back when I sell the last load of wood chips, and then I think we'll go to our silo. We'll grab that canola and go ahead and sell that. I know I got to fill the canola that's ready for harvest, but uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get the most money I can before I head back, bring the mo most cash I can with me, and then uh, we'll probably spread some manure down, and then maybe by then the wool price will have peaked. We'll see. Well, the wood chipper has been returned. And this is our last load of wood chips. So we definitely made money off that wood chipper, even though we leased it for uh, just shy, was it three grand? Something like that. And so I think I made, um, is that going to show up? Let's see, what have I sold today here? If I sold anything, uh, property income, I don't think it's that, uh, sold milk. Harvest income, I think it's going to be under, yeah. So we made almost 25 grand from the, from the wood chips today. Uh, sold milk, yeah, property income. Yeah, that's our, that's our greenhouses, orchards, and all that. So yeah, made a decent profit on that. Now we're going to head to our silo. Going to grab that canola and head to the vehicle shop and sell that. Uh, 80,000 liters for $800 per. That should easily get us back over 400,000 in the bank account. 
Let's go over here. I've tried resetting the traffic a couple times to get it spaced out a little bit more. The main problem is, since I own a lot of fields next to the road, when I hire a worker and the worker's turning around, the traffic will stop and that's how it gets all backed up. So I'm at the point of just saying, uh, we'll just, you know, deal with the traffic the way it is. Uh, I'll cut across my own field because there's nothing in it. All right, give me that sweet canola. And it is a vehicle shop, right? Before I bring it to the wrong place. I mean, the garden center price is rising, but yeah, we'll just uh, I'll just go sell at the garden center for now. Almost six hundred dollars for the wool, which is good. Are we almost full? We are full. Ooh, our corn's ready. I'll have to wait. Because the next thing I want to do after selling the canola is I want to grab the deuce far because I was going to use the T8, but the deuce far is already up there at the animal farm. Yeah, we'll grab him with the manure spreader. And we'll come down and do those two fields when we spread the lime in and maybe the one across from it. Since the traffic is all clumped together, usually when you don't see no oncoming traffic, it's, you know it's not going to see any for a while. And maybe while I'm here with the truck as well, we'll top that off with some diesel fuel. Although I did see on one of the mod sites I go to today that there is a... Looks like a decent diesel fuel production. It needs canola and sunflower. I think 60% canola, 40% sunflower, and you get diesel fuel out of it. Uh, so $334 worth of diesel fuel. Not bad after just selling $64,000 worth of canola. So I'm going to bring this back to the main farm. I'm going to go up and grab the deuce fire grab the manure spreader that we now have and we'll come on down to the fields next to the sheep pasture and we'll see how far 25 I think it's 25,000 liters that trailer holds co5 far 25,000 liters will get us on spreading some some muck around so 25,000 liters of manure it looks like the trailer could hold more than that I got space in there to cram some more in there Now, it used to be in FS17, there was a mod that if you spread manure down, it would give you two stages of fertilization. I wonder if they'll do that in seasons, because seasons require three stages. So I assume there's an unfold. Uh, yep, there's an unfolder. Um, I have no idea how wide the working width is on this thing. Um, anything else I need to know about? Not really. So it doesn't look like it's that wide of an implement, but that's fine. I probably could have used GPS and would have kind of told me, but it doesn't look like the manure is going down extremely fast, which is good. But then again, this is a modded trailer by Stevie, so he probably uh, changed <laughs> some of the XML files so he doesn't use as much manure, but really. All right, so it's not going down hardly at all. All right, so this looks like it was a good plan so far. Um, <laughs> so far, because, I mean, we're going to get plenty of manure. Right? We got tons of cows now. I mean, we had plenty of cows before, but yesterday we bought 40. So, yeah, I don't I didn't do the math on how many cows we're up to. But uh, let's see, 37 times four. So that's like 120 and another 28. So I'm like a. 140 cows we're, we're approaching. Actually, 150. 
And I think that cow barn holds 200 or 250. Somewhere in there. So I know when I first started out, Mercury Farms, I said I definitely want to turn this into a dairy farm and have a couple cow pastures. It looks like I'm going to be a little bit short in that, that area. So one time around this field already, and yeah, I'm not going through manure like I thought I would be. So I'm okay if I overlap a little bit. The neighbors are going to love me. And just before lunch hour, right across the street is a snack bar. So that's going to make it even more lovely if the wind's blowing the right direction. Yeah, so definitely not going to manure like I thought I was going to. But like I said, it's a modded one. So I don't know uh, what Stevie usually does for the XML files to... I don't, I don't know what his ratio is for dropping it, but I don't. I think 25,000 liters of manure, I would have gone through it pretty quickly on standard. But I'm just trying to think, all right, if I went and sold this at the BGA, this manure, of course, I would get some cash for selling it at the BGA. And then that would transfer over to digest date. You know, what's the ratio of that? I mean, so am I, am I getting my money's worth by spreading it like this? Or would I have been better going to the BGA and making digestate out of it and getting paid that way? But you know what? I ha Like I said, I don't really usually spray, uh, spread manure like this. So, yeah, it's different. Plus, we get a trailer out of it. Just got to make sure I wash the trailer before I put grain into it. So... Yeah, it only holds 25,000 liters though, which I don't want to use it on the big field behind us, but like that canola field right across the street, uh, that probably be a good place to use it. And then I can use the big trailer for other things. Yeah, I did not, it looks like I'm going to get both fields done with the 25,000 liters. And it makes me think on the Pacific Northwest, should I get a manure spreader on the Pacific Northwest? But I think I would need a, I would like a bigger one. I mean, I'm okay with the working width and the rate it's uh, dispersing the manure, but of course, where the cow cow pasture is on the lower plateau, those are all big fields. So, yeah, definitely would like to have a bigger capacity. So, when I hire a worker, or if I do it myself, I can go quite a ways. But you know, I'm going quite a ways here with this 25,000 liters. So, something to look at. But I mean, the trailer does cost 50, well, close to 60 grand. But when you owe 49 million, what's the difference? So, <laughs> yeah, so I'll be, um, I'll be looking into that a little bit more. But the first thing I'll be looking at on the Pacific Northwest when I get back, obviously, as you can see, we got $430,000 I could be taking with us. Because I'm going to take every penny that I can off of Mercury Farms and bring it with us. Because, I mean, that's where all the money's going to go eventually anyways. Of course, I haven't checked the PDA to make sure I'm getting um, a fertilization stage off of this. Yeah, so just about 15,000 liters of manure to cover this field. But with that being said, with the amount of manure that the cows produce, I could do this quite often and use a digestate, which I don't have much of on the big livestock market field. Now, in a way, you got to think to yourself, you know, is this cost effective? Because I did spend 60 grand on this trailer, but I'm saving myself from spreading down artificial fertilizer on these fields. But the question is... 
am I saving that much money on artificial fertilizer to, to you know, pay for the cost of the trailer itself? I mean, in the long run, yes, I will. But for the short term, we're left here on this map. Uh, probably not. But you know what? It's fun. It's fun. That's why we play games is to have fun. And I was going to check the map to see if I'm getting a fertilization stage off it, and I forgot, and I'm already started, but uh, we're just going to keep going with it and just assume that obviously I'm getting a fertilization stage. That's what we're just going to say. We are. We know we are. I hope. But the weird thing about the cost of this trailer is, is the spreader that we modded to put on the back of this cost almost as much as a trailer itself looks like I'm gonna be just short of being able to complete this field am I can I maybe I got a little bit left I don't know <laughs> it's probably gonna leave like a little bit of a chunk left somewhere oh that's a shame <laughs> that is a shame but you know what? That is a nice little uh, nice little trailer and hookup that we have there. I can go back and obviously fill up and touch that off. And then it'll be all set for when I harvest that canola field across the street. I can fertilize that. Well, I, let me just uh, double check here. We stopped. The, uh, yep, so I do get a stage out of it. Of course, there's that little piece I missed there. Um, yeah, I got weeds up here I need to take care of, but that should be fertilized. But that's a sugar beet up there, so I'm not going to be like really concerned about it. But obviously, I would like to because uh, that weeds is what 20 percent. I don't know, uh, something like that. So yeah, we'll have to get rid of the weeds at some point. Uh, probably sooner the better, because that way we don't have to use herbicide. But we're gonna bring this guy back up here and top him off with some manure. Yeah, so I don't think I'll be selling manure anymore, which means I'm not going to be using the big trailer to bring it to the BGA. Yeah, we'll have to use this spreader a little bit more and uh, make sure I keep enough manure as well for our greenhouses and our orchards. Of course, now I'm wondering, can I unload... Let me just see how much manure I got. Still 57,000 liters to go. Can I unload this into the greenhouses? Looks like I cannot. Probably because I got the spreader on the back. So if I modified this back to a regular trailer, if I didn't have the spreader on the back, it probably would accept the manure yep doesn't accept it with a spreader on the back which is fine that's why we got the other trailer for anyways right so let me go ahead and park this guy back under here and I forgot all about when I had the wood chipper there was a couple pieces of wood that I wanted to get rid of uh, one being here. And the other one. Being over here at the greenhouse when I tried a long time ago. Because I didn't realize, I didn't know how the stumps were removed here. Yeah, I was trying to do it the wood chipping way, but I bet you if I brought that wood chipper over, I probably could have got rid of that log. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, yeah, but now our grass fields are going to be easier to mow and windrow. Ted and Windrow. Uh, this field much easier. There was a lot of trees there. We got some money off of them. I got to see. I got my tanker full there. Um, so the one thing I'm kind of waiting for is the wool is at 639 and still rising. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab our flat bed. I'm going to head on down. I'm going to start loading up the pallets and I'll be ready to go when the price is, uh, is ready. I mean, I got to sell it anyways because I'm running out of pallets. 
So whatever the price peaks at, that's what we'll sell. We get what we get. And then, of course, when we head to... When I fly back to the Pacific Northwest, we'll have tons of cash to bring with us. And who knows, maybe buy some two... Oh, no, maybe two fields. If not, we'll buy one decent field. And then the rest can be kind of maybe help pay off the loan interest. Maybe. We'll worry about that in uh, when we get there. But meanwhile, I'm going to bring this guy down here. i got to grab the case Puma. Um, drop off the fertilizer spreader. Uh, of course, pick up the pallet forks. And then come on down here and load this guy up as best as I can. And then do that whole wonderful process of loading, get to the spinnery, unload, all that. But if we come in here, you can see... Uh, so they're filling up that one. So yeah, I got uh, six, seven, eight. So 80,000 liters of wool waiting to be sold. So yeah, let me go get my case Puma. I'll load this all up and uh, probably we'll wrap up the episode by selling their wool. Well, it's late in the evening. I had to wait and wait and wait, but the price finally stopped at 704. Not bad at all. Uh, let's see if I could, if it, I think the ones in the back will sell. Alright. So, $14,000, obviously, at 10,000 liters per pallet. Let's go ahead and unstrap the rest, undo that. So I think we might, it's going to be awfully close to get up to half a million. That would be a good chunk of change to head, head back with. One down, five more to go. And I'll reload these all off cam and I may do the heavy lift mod to get just put them all back in. And, nope, this way. Don't knock the one off the back off. Uh, or that one. Getting awfully close. No! So who would have thought when I started the episode just that I forgot we were like 130? I mean, technically when I loaded up the game, I was just shy of $100,000. But the property income and the BGA income over midnight got us up to 130. Now here we are on the doorstep of a half billion dollars. A pretty good week here at Mercury Farms because, yeah, we're, we got a half million dollars to take with us. I spent $100,000 on buying some more cows, and we spent sixty grand on buying a manure spreader slash trailer. Keep hitting the wrong gas pedal, or the pedal... Uh, down there, when I want to go backwards, I'm in the gas pedal. I'm like, no, wrong pedal. Yeah, without having these pallets, um, and basically one of these pallets at 10,000 liters is 10 in game pallets. So, yeah, that would, uh, if, if I was doing that, I'd be like, yeah, let's, uh, let's get an auto loader. Just trying to get this pallet facing me more. There we go. Well, with the last pallet, that should put us over a half million. 
And the thing I probably won't do, I thought about first sleeping through the night and getting some property income and all that. But I think uh, I shouldn't do that because I'll, I'll just take the money out and hit the Pacific Northwest with it. I think I'm better off just ending the episode right here. And that way when I come back to Mercury Farms, I can sleep overnight. And that way when the morning comes, at least I'll have some cash in this bank account to buy, buy seeds and stuff. But there we are. Five hundred and one thousand in the bank account. So I'm gonna just take half a million of it. So when we start next week, or at least when we come back to the Mercury Farms, yeah, we're gonna have just a thousand dollars, one thousand four hundred eighty dollars in the bank account. Well, actually, it'd be more than that because being dark, well, it's almost nighttime. But uh, I'll sleep through the night, so I get some property income. And yeah, uh, I don't remember if I sold anything at the BGA or not. Uh, but yeah, next week, uh, obviously, I got some fields to harvest. I, we definitely will be cutting some hay down. Yeah, some hay. Well, grass and make some hay. Put that into the to our mixer, and of course we got tons of silage at the BGA. We got like 1.4 million liters over there, so I'll have to grab some. Just make some more TMR for the cows, and uh, probably just make another half million liters worth of TMR, and I think we'll be all set there. Then the rest of the silage I may sell. But uh, yeah, that corn there is for harvest and selling. That's not for chaff. Uh, we got sugar beets. Uh, I got the big livestock market field that we could uh, work on. So plenty of work to do, like always. But as for this week, that's going to do it. And that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. I do appreciate you watching as always. And I'll catch you next time on Mercury Farms. But until then, have a good one.